episodes, we will explore the Chicago neighborhood Wicker Park. As we venture through the next three episodes, we will also immerse ourselves in the art in Wicker. From galleries to thrift shops to hidden treasures, you will see each part of Wicker's creative side. Now it's time to explore one of the oldest buildings in the neighborhood, the Flatiron Building. This building is exclusively rented by artists who use the space as studios, shops, and performance venues. Let's dive right in and look at a theater company that has re-imaged their mission to be more involved in the community and tackle various social issues. The things that we are asking for are not overwhelming. They are the bare minimum. And if the board won't hear us out, if they won't stand up and do what's right, then we have to tell them this broken system has got to go. Collaborate Action's mission is to create theatrical experiences that push artistic boundaries in order to explore our most critical social issues with a diverse community of Chicagoans. And, um, and so for the last couple of years, we've been really focusing on Chicago's most critical issues. When I, when I became the artistic director of Clever Action, the, the company was a democracy of like 25 theater artists and mostly actors, and we would vote for the season. You know, you have to do something really unique, and you have to do what I think only theater can do, really connect people and have a deep, transformational experience. We believe in the power of experience, that an experience can actually leave a fingerprint on your soul and change the way that you see the future. So Clabber Action is trying to use art and our and our little wacky, beautiful community, people and energy, to just be part of that. We are definitely characters, and the work we try to do is, is different and unique and pushes all these boundaries and says, cool, this is what you thought art was. We think it also can be this and this. So we want to do things that relate to the people that are living here, but also can relate to people who don't live here. Since we've changed our mission, we kind of figure out the audience that we think needs to hear this, and we find a way to get them. We've really dove headfirst into doing this for the community. We've taken the ego out of it, so it's, it's not necessarily for just for the theater people anymore. It's for people people. I wanted the work to, to, to do more than just entertain, and to really be able to incite change in our community and so that's the work we're doing now and that's how we change from being a democracy where a bunch of people voted on the play that they were going to be in. Now we're like thinking what does the community need and until we can you know provide a, a, an environment where everybody has the chance to be happy and loved. You know our work is not done here as, as, as humans. In the studio today, we have Nick Rokop, who is the board president of Collabor Action. Thank you for joining us, Nick. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thanks. <laughs> I know. Can you just yeah. tell us a little bit about your role at Collabor Action? So I'm the board president. I'm also a company member. I try to act a little bit, so I've been in a few of our productions that are uh, short plays. Oh, okay. And um, we saw in the video how Collabor Action is really involved in their community. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? You said the mission changed four years ago, right? Can you just uh, tell us a little about the old mission and what, how you came to? Yeah, so for the last oh, almost 20 years of its existence, um, Collabor Action started off as a group of artists, a um, bit of a tribe, and like so many small street theaters start, and um, did a, um, a, a multidisciplinary, uh, young, professional aesthetic of theater. Um, about a, a couple of years ago, our executive artistic director, Anthony, um, had another midlife crisis, as some of us tend to do at a certain age and uh, said that while we produce wonderful theater, it's also really important to make a difference in the world. So uh, we changed our mission to push artistic boundaries the way we have been doing, but uh, use them to explore cr critical issues, social issues, um, starting with uh, those here in Chicago. Okay. And uh, when you say you're pushing the boundaries, how do you guys go about doing that, tackling those social issues? 
Well, so we, um, our theater is not just you sit and, and watch the uh, performance. Um, we involve the audience, um, break that fourth wall. Um, we also use a lot of video. We use um, uh, different styles of theater and, and really engage people in the performances. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, um, how do you engage them? You were telling me about the classroom. Can you just describe yeah. to our audience? A yeah, about so that? Our, our last play, Forgotten Future, which is about the education system, um, tells the story of three students, CPS students, who, and, uh, and how their classrooms and, and their teachers and their schools affect them. And so we set it up as a, a schoolroom. Audience members walk in and they look around and they say, where do we sit? Well, there are school desks with the little tables and, uh, and actually tables where you sit and the action occurs around you. So it tells a story of three students. So there's three actual settings, but the audience is all around in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, wow. Well, that's, I got to see that. <laughs> and, um, can you tell me about some of the other platforms of ways that you uh, reach out to the community, um, like the cancer one you were telling me about mm -hmm. and um, just the other ones you got? <laughs> yeah, so we started thinking about what are the most important issues in, in our community of, in our city of Chicago. And the one that bubbled up first was always the, uh, the issue of crime and violence here in Chicago. So two years ago, we all got together and devised um, and created a piece called Crime Scene Chicago. Uh, we first put it on um, in, in our theater space at Wicker Park. Um, we told the story of a number of crimes that happened, like the murder of little Jojo, the rapper, and the baseball beating of the two young ladies actually in Wicker Park, uh, and a couple other stories like that. And that was actually surrounded by a documentary of the history of violence in Chicago. And um, not only was it a piece that was sort of a docudrama, but it was also one of the best pieces we've done. Even the critics said it was the best show that we've done in a long time. So that uses the, you do that as a video or is that a um, live play? <laughs> no, all, all the performances start live um, and, and then they become a platform for many other things that we do. So Crime Scene started in our mm -hmm. theater, but we also then um, put the play on in the parks. Um, two parks in Englewood, one in Cicero, um, and one in Austin Town Park the mm -hmm. first summer. This past summer we uh, did Englewood, Austin, and Rogers Park. And that's what we'll be doing again um, next summer. But we also added to that an After School Matters uh, crime scene um, teen ensemble who actually took the basic script and these young people wrote their stories and, and added it to it. And it's a really powerful show. And that's actually coming on um, at our place December 13th at 8 p.m. So hopefully oh, okay. you can come and see it. <laughs> and um, is that the only upcoming show that you have going on right now? Is there other shows that you have as well? No, so we're remounting our Forgotten Future, the education project, um, in February. Uh, so that'll um, be the second time we're putting it on because there was a lot of demand for it. A lot of teachers, a lot of students want to come see it in the community. So, um, And then our fourth platform, actually, is uh, about veterans. It's called Family of War, and that's going to be our next main stage production in May. Okay. And, um Let's see here. Uh, what are we are talking about that? Uh, how can we find out some more information about you guys? Well, let's see. We have a website, <laughs> collaboraction.org. <laughs> Sorry, I've been yeah. getting sick over the holidays. I still have a cough. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope. hope I know. Don't worry. I'm okay. It's just a cold. It's just that seasonal change. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so continue yeah. before right. I rudely interrupted. <laughs> no. So our website, collaboraction.org, pretty much tells you all about the shows and the different platforms that we have going on. Um, we're also pretty active on social media, so <clears throat> our Twitter and our um, Facebook accounts, so mm -hmm. you can find out a lot more there. Okay, and uh, what brought you to Collabor Action? How did you get involved? Wow, one of my business uh, associates colleagues about 10 years ago invited me to one of our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. So like most theaters, we hold a couple fundraisers every year. And this one was called Carnival. So we're really good at throwing parties. <laughs> and uh, Carnival um, it was really a, a, an experience with um, body painting, fashion runway show, all kinds of uh, all kinds of parties, plus performances that, of, of bits and pieces of the shows that we did at that time. And I got so enamored with it that uh, I just started coming to plays, mm. became a bit of a groupie, and then um, also, uh, as it turned out, got so much more involved that I was invited mm. on the board and now board president. So. That's awesome. Uh, why do you think collaboration is important for Wicker Park? What do you think it brings to the community? So we engage a lot of our community, whether it's the restaurants mm -hmm. or the um, uh, businesses around Wicker Park, and 
uh, give them a place to, to really come together and, uh, and see great performance and great art. Mm. And what do you hope for the future of collaboration? I would love to see it go national as a platform to um, explore, experience, and incite social change. Mm. And like you were saying to me, like the main goal is not to go big. Your main goal is to, for change. It is to absolutely to make an impact in our community, and mm -hmm. uh, which we've already seen with Crime Scene, our uh, cancer show, our education show, and then uh, the veterans. So those are some of the platforms mm -hmm. that we'll be using to, uh, to make a difference in our communities. And uh, have you seen a, a great turnout from the community? You see more people showing up? Is it starting to go off in the community? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our uh, community partners are very much engaged. Um, we, we bring in people from all over the community who are actually working on these issues. And not just artists, but people who are actually doing community work in crime or other areas. And um, I'm curious, how was the reaction when you went to the parks? Um, fantastic, mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Love. The people came out, um, participated, and it's actually, each of those communities is really colorful and wonderful, and I, I just enjoy going out there. And uh, have you seen any effective change thus far, or do you say it's still kind of in the works? No, absolutely. We've mm -hmm. seen people get engaged. Um, we've seen um, young people particularly now um, become advocates for increasing the peace here in Chicago through the crime show, and that's really wonderful to see. Right. I definitely yeah. want to see the new the show coming up whether you're saying about the three students. That sounds yeah. really touching. I can't even imagine. But, well, uh, thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, now we move on to one of our other gems hidden through the maze of the Flatiron Building, Brainstorm, the local comic book store. Brainstorm is a comic book video store and also tabletop gaming store. The store is just uh, kind of crafted out into its own, its own little niche here in the Wicker Park neighborhood as being like a, a just a unique store. We do things a little differently than most comic book stores do. Um, and we just kind of, we, we like to be friendly and have fun and we're always doing something and, and just, I don't know, we're just our own little thing. It's kind of hard to explain at times. Our comic selection is diverse, our movie selection is diverse, so we cover the gamut from horror to sci-fi to you know, offbeat independent book and film, just the whole thing. There's really, there's nothing we leave out. We also offer ourselves up as an event space. So we have had uh, punk shows, hip hop shows, uh, art openings. We invite people in. Like, you know, we, we're not just kind of, so we want to create a sense of community. And also just within hosting the gaming events here, we invite people in, like come, sit down, play this game with us, have fun, you know, just, just stuff like that, you know, we just kind of invite people over. I think our customers are amazing. Um, I love them. They, they're, they're a very diverse crowd, everything from, from execs to beat cops to, you know, skater kids to, you know, just, it's everything. So it's a, such a diverse crowd. I love them all. It's kind of like one of those things, you, you love it so much, you want to you wanna be able to live your life off of it. Um, you, you like the medium, you like the, the people that you normally meet through the medium. It's kind of like a childhood dream. It's like you went to other people's comic book stores and who didn't think of like, man, I would love to own my own. You know, just kinda, so you just, you just chase the dream. Well, that's all the time we have for now. But don't worry, we still have two more episodes exploring other arts. Tune in at 10.30 a.m. for our next show of Hood's Wicker Park Edition. Until next time, I'm your host, Katie Berg, and thank you for watching.